first problem, array sum, write a function that takes an array of numbers and calculates the sum of all the numbers in the array. For input of an array containing numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, the output is 15. For input of an array containing numbers 10, negative 5, 8, and 2 in that order, the output is 15. For input of an array of numbers containing the elements 0, 0, 0, 0, and 0, in that order, the output is 0. For input of an array containing numbers 2.5, 1.5, 3.7, and 4.2, the output is 11.9. And finally, for an input of an empty array, the output is 0. Let's solve array sum. Write a function that takes an array of numbers and calculates the sum of all of the numbers in the array. Okay, take note that in the given problem, you need to implement a function that adds up all the numbers in the array and returns the sum. The function should be able to handle arrays of different lengths and include both positive and negative numbers. The provided examples illustrate various scenarios and their expected outputs. Okay, so let's start. Okay, so let's discuss. So first, we need to write a function. So um, for a simplicity, we just have a separate function here. I named the function my function. It 
takes um, a parameter which is usually the input of our sample run so in this case it takes an array so we have here a parameter name named an array and then we call the function so first we need the input so let's take a look at these three lines of code here so first to be able to get an input from JavaScript uh, in, in order for for it to simplify uh, things I just choose the function prompt so prompt gets uh, a string representation of the input and saves it in the variable called an input okay so to be able to convert a, a string into uh, an array uh, I just call the function eval okay and then I call the function my function and then with the parameter an input as the as the array parameter and then I displayed it using console.log for simplicity okay so these are the three statements okay within the function itself okay my function it takes in a parameter an array which is an array and returns the result to be the sum of the array of numbers okay so first we let the uh, we have a variable result here that stores the result which is the sum we initialize result to zero okay and then for simplicity i just um have a for loop here and then the for loop we have an index here the index um, i use the variable named ctr so since in javascript uh, indices of array starts with zero so if we have n numbers we iterate from zero to n minus one uh, in the first example we have five elements so the indices iterate from uh, element ctr from zero one two three and four since the number of elements is five the minimum index is zero and the maximum index is n minus 1 so 5 minus 1 is 4 okay and then we increment each and every index for every iteration okay next we would say that we add each and every element so we say result is equal to result plus r an array of index ctr okay in shorthand for javascript we can use this result plus equals an array of index ctr and then result holds the sum so we return that result so if we run this one for inputs one two three four five okay one two three four five the answer is 15 okay for inputs 10 negative 5 8 and 2 10 negative 5 8 and 2 okay it's still 15 okay next uh, we have five zeros 1 2 3 4 5 okay the output is 0 next we have uh, four floating point numbers here 2.5 1.5 5, 1.5 um, 3.7 and 4.2 3.7 and 4.2 11.9 is that correct so 2.5 plus 1.5 plus 3.7 plus 4.2 okay oh it's 11.9 okay the output should be 11.9 and then if we have an empty array it's zero so all of the inputs are correct okay and then let's say okay 
Whenever we iterate an array in JavaScript, we use its property, the array name dot length. So we have the property length and we use an index. What if we 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 won't be using index? How do we do that? Okay, so let's just comment it out. Okay. We can use an array that for each. Okay, and then we have an anonymous function here, but I don't want to complicate things. Um, there is a shorthand, so we have for, and then we have let not ctr, let element. Okay, I want to name the variable element, and then of the array. Okay, and then we say result is equal to result plus element. Or we can say result plus equals element. Okay. So let's try that. Okay. So we have one, two, one, two, three, four, five. Okay. That's 15. So we are using for of. Okay. Next one is 10, negative 5, 8, and 2. 10, negative 5, 8, and 2. Okay, it's still 15. Good. We have 5 zeros. Okay, next we have 2.5, 1.5. Three point seven and four point two. Okay, it's eleven point nine, not twelve point nine. And finally, we have an empty array. Okay, good. What if we have um, an array with only one element? Okay, let's say it's negative. All right. So that's how we solve array sum. Next problem, element count. Write a function that takes an array and a target element and counts the number of occurrences of the, tar of the target element in the array. Take note that there are two inputs. The first one is the array and then the second one is the target element. For in Put of an array containing numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 in that order, and the number 3, the output is 1. For input of an array containing numbers 10, 5, 8, 2, 5, and 5, and the number 5, the output is 3. For input of an array containing numbers 0, 0, 0, 0, and 0 in that order, and the number 0, the output is 5. For input of an array containing numbers 2, 4, 6, and 8, and the number 10, the output is 0. And finally, uh, for input of an array which is empty and the number 7, the output is 0. Okay, so let's solve the problem element count. Write a function that takes an array and a target element and counts the number of occurrences of the target element in the array. Okay, so we have two uh, inputs here. We have the array itself and then the element. Uh, take note that in this problem, you are required to implement a function that counts the number of, of occurrences of a given target element in an array. The function should take an array and a target element as inputs and return the count of occurrences. The provided examples demonstrate different scenarios and their expected outputs. And um, for, for this problem and the succeeding problems, let's use our so solution from the first problem as template, okay, a starting point to solve the problem. Since uh, we have two elements here, 
we use an array and let's say target okay as parameters to our um, function and for input we have an input let's say an array okay and then we have eval because we need to convert string to array and enter target so we let's say we use the variable named target and then okay no need to do this and then my function an array and then target okay so let's start with that okay and then we count the number of occurrences so let the result be the number of occurrences
Okay, so let's uh, discuss and test this. Okay, wait for the function. I'll just copy this. Okay. So first we have an array. So <clears throat> we use prompt and then we save it to an array. Next we convert an array to a string. So we call the function eval and an array as parameter and save it to an array. Next, we get our target using prompt and then save it to target. And then we call my function using um, parameters an array and target. Okay. So for the function itself, we have parameters an array and target. Result um, holds the number of occurrences of target in an array. Okay. So for our um, iteration of an array, we use the for of, okay? So, we let element be the <coughs> element that holds an array. Okay, so we say for element of array, of an array, and then if element equals equals target, so we compare the value of element, uh, each and every element in an array to target, so if they are equal, okay? So we just use double equal sign because we are comparing values. Triple equals compares objects. Okay. And then we increment result. Okay. Outside the for loop, we return a uh, result. Okay. So we use this. And then we check this. And then we run. Uh, our first test case is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 3. Okay, the output is 1. Next is 10, 5, 8. Ten five eight two five five, and our target is five. Okay, the output is three. Next, we have five zeros and zero. The output is five. Good. Next, we have uh, two four six eight, and the target is ten. The output is 0. Good. Next, we have an empty array and then 7. That answer is also 0. What if we have a one element array? Okay, the answer is 1. What if we have a one element array and a target that is not that element? The answer is 0. Okay. I think we're good. So that's how we solve element count next problem largest number write a function that takes an array of numbers and finds the largest number in the array for input of an array containing numbers 1 2 3 4 and 5 in that order the output is 5 for input of an array containing numbers 10 5 8 2 13 and 9 the output is 13 for input of an array containing numbers negative 5, negative 9, negative 2, and negative 1 in that order, the output is negative 1. For input of an array containing numbers 0, 0, 0, 0, and 0, the output is 0. And finally, for input of an array containing the number 4, the output is 4. Next, we'll be solving largest number. Write a function that takes an array of numbers and finds the largest number in the array. Take note that in this problem, uh, our task is to write a function that finds the largest number in an array of numbers. The function should take an array as input and return the largest number present in the array. 
the provided examples demonstrate different arrays and their corresponding largest numbers. So we use our template for, for our solution in problem 1 and then we start from that. Okay, so let's discuss. Okay, so for our um, main code, so we have a prompt here to enter an array. So the user enters an input, saves it to a string called an input. We call function eval with parameter an input to convert the string to, a, to an array. And then we call my function using parameter an input and then... Um, we use that at, as parameter for console.log to display our the out the output for the function itself we call uh, we use my function as the function name okay result stores the largest number we initialize result to zero we iterate each and every element of an array okay using the for of um, structure in in JavaScript to iterate each and every element of an array. So if element is greater than result, it means that the current element is greater than the result so far. So we have to update the value of result. So we assign element to result. So outside of the array, we return result. So let's try this. Okay, we have one, two, three, four, five. Good. We have ten, five, eight. Ten, five, eight, two, thirteen, nine. Okay, the answer is 13. Good. We have negative 5, negative 9, negative 2, and negative 1. So that's negative 5, negative 9, negative 2, and negative 1. Oh, the output is 0. Okay. So... What if the numbers are negative? So we have to adjust our code.
Okay, so we have to consider negative numbers. Uh, for, for simplicity, let's just check the array, uh, the number of elements. If the number of elements is 0, we just return 0. For simplicity, since we are, we are, we are dealing with functions here. And then, um, this block of code is executed if uh, the, R, the number of elements in the array is not 0. So, we assign result as the first element of an array. So, since in Java, indices starts at 0, we say result is assigned to uh, the value of an array of index 0. So, we iterate the second element to the last element. Okay, so we use indices 1 up to uh, less than length. So we let CTR is equal to 1. CTR is let less than length of array. We increment CTR by 1. So if an array of index CTR is greater than the result, this means that an array of index CTR is greater than the result so far. We assign result to an array of index CTR and then we return result. Okay, so let's test this. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. It should be close brackets. Okay. Next is ten, five, eight. Two thirteen and nine. The answer is thirteen. Next is negative five, negative nine, negative two, negative one. The answer is negative one. Good. Next we have five zeros. The answer is zero, good. And finally, we have four. The answer is four. What if we have an empty array? The answer is zero. What if we have an array of two elements? One, two. Uh, close brackets. One, two. Okay, the answer is two. So that's correct. So that's how we solve largest number. Next problem, palindrome check. Write a function that takes a string and checks if it is a palindrome. For input string race car, the output is true. For input string hello, the output is false. For input string level, the output is true. For input string noon, the output is true. And finally, for input string open AI, the output is false false. Next problem, we solve prob palindrome check. Write a function that takes a string and checks if it is a palindrome. In this problem, we are given a string and your task is to write a function that determines whether the string is a palindrome or not. A palindrome is a word, phrase, number, or sequence of characters that reads the same forward and backward. The function should return true if the string is a palindrome and false otherwise. The provided examples illustrate different strings and their corresponding palindrome check results. So let's start with our template from problem 1.
Okay, so let's use this code. Uh, let's try a naive function first. So we would enter a string, okay, via prompt. So we say um, we save the string to the variable and input. Uh, this shouldn't be evil, okay? Let's remove that. And then we call my function using an input as parameter and use console.log to display it as output. So, so for my function, um, it takes here uh, a parameter, an array. Let's just change that, a string. Okay, let's use a string. So result holds the result if it is a palindrome. So it initially, it is a palindrome, so we set it to true. We iterate each and every character of a string. So we let CTR equal to zero. And up to less than length of a string, and then we increment it one by one. So it is a palindrome if it reads the same as forward and backward. So the first character should equal the last character. And the second character should be equal to the second to the last character. And so on and so forth. So it is a palindrome if let's say for each and every uh, index CTR, it should be equal to the character at index length of a string minus 1 minus CTR. So take note that um, the last character in um, JavaScript has index length minus 1 since in Java, um, arrays, begin, arrays and uh, array of characters begins with uh, 0. Okay? So if it begins with 0, it should end with length minus 1. And then this is the beginning part, CTR, and the ending part is minus CTR. So if, it not, if those characters are not equal, it is not a palindrome. So we set result to false, and then we exit the loop. And then outside the for loop, we return the result. So let's check. Okay, so for race car and hello, the answers are true and false. That's good. For level and noon, the answers are both true and true since those are palindromes. That's good. And for open AI and an empty string, the answer is false and true. So an empty string is also a palindrome. So our, our algorithm is correct. So here, this is a naive algorithm. So let's say, say let's say we have a string here, level and noon. Okay, for level, it is a five character string. We only compare the first and fifth characters and the, and the second and fourth characters. No need to compare the third character.
So let's try. Um, so for five characters, zero and one uh, are iterated to compare it with four and three. So five divided by two is two. So it should be less than so zero and one. So this is correct. For four characters, um, four divided by two is two. So zero and one is iterated to compare it with two and three. So in let's optimize. So instead of iterating from zero to length minus one, we iterate it from zero to length divided by two minus one. So let's check. So race car and hello are both true and uh, are are true and false for its output. So that's good. So level and noon uh, output true and true respectively. So that's great. And finally, opened AI and empty string uh, outputted false and true respectively. So that's how we solve palindrome check. Next problem, factorial calculator. Write a function that calculates the factorial of a given number. For input 5, the output is 120. For input 0, the output is 1. For input 3, the output is 6. For input 6, the output is 720. And finally, for input 10, the output is 3,628,800. Next, we solve the problem, factorial calculator. Write a function that calculates the factorial of a given number. In this problem, we need to write a function that takes a number as input and calculates its factorial. The factorial of a non-negative integer n, denoted by n factorial, is the product of all positive integers less than or equal to n. The function should return the factorial of the given number. The provided examples illustrate different inputs and their corresponding factorial results. So let's start with um, our template from the first problem. Okay, so let's discuss our code. Okay, so we prompt a number using the prompt function and save it as an input. And then we call my function using an input as parameter and we use that as parameter for console.log so that we can log it as output. And then within my function, we have one parameter here, num. Okay, by definition, factorial of 0 is 1. So we let result be the resulting factorial. We initially set result by 1. So multiplying a number by 1 is just redundant since uh, a number multiplied by 1 is just a number. So no need to uh, start with 1. Instead, we started with 2. So we use the for loop. So we let CTR be from 2 to num. So CTR equals to CT and until CTR is less than and uh, less than or equal to num. And then we increment CTR by 1. And then 
we multiply CTR by result. So we say result is equal to result multiplied by CTR or we use its shorthand notation result times equals CTR. And then outside the for loop, we return result. So let's run that. Okay, so for our test data, it is uh, 5, 0, and 3. 5 factorial is 120. 0 factorial is 1. 3 factorial is 6. Good. And then finally, 6 and 10. Six factorial is seven hundred twenty, and then ten factorial is three million six hundred and twenty-eight thousand eight hundred. So that's how we solve factorial calculator. Next problem: reverse sentence. Write a function that reverses the order of words in a sentence. For input string hello space world the output is world space hello for input string i space love space coding the output is coding space love space i for input string v space quick space brown space fox the output is fox space brown space quick space v for input string programming space is space fun, the output is fun space is space programming. And finally, for input string open AI space is space awesome, the output is awesome space is space open AI. Next, we solve the problem reverse sentence. Write a function that reverses the order of words in a sentence. In this problem, you are given a sentence as input and you need to write a function that reverses the order of words in the sentence. The words in the sentence are separated by spaces. The function should return the sentence in the word with the words in reverse order. The provided examples demonstrate different inputs and their corresponding outputs after reversing the word order in the sentence. So let's start with our template from the first problem. Okay, so let's try this. So we prompt enter a sentence using the prompt function and we save the string as an input. 
We call my function using an input as parameter and then we use that as parameter for console.log to log it in the um, our output. So for my function, it takes the parameter a sentence. So result holds the sentence in reverse word. We um, initialize result to an empty string. Word holds the um, per word that we encounter in the sentence. We initialize word to an empty string. So we use the for of loop. So we let element be an L, um we let element be an element of the array of characters as a sentence. So element iterates each and every character of a sentence. So uh, by our definition, a sentence is separated by spaces. So spaces is just the delimiter. So we just use this one. Okay. So if element is equal to space, we say that our previous value of word okay, is complete. So we have to uh, append it at the beginning. So let's say we have hello here. okay, And then we have an empty string. So we have to append it at the beginning. And then we encounter the word world. So we have to append world at the beginning of hello. So this should be word first before result. Um, it shouldn't be result plus word. Okay. It should be word plus result. Otherwise, we just add the character to the end of the word if it is not a space, if element is not a space. So we say word is equal to word plus element. In shorthand form, it is word plus equals element. And then, if ever we encounter um, the last word, okay, we have to add it at the beginning again of result. So we say result is equal to word plus result. And then we return result. So let's uh, check our code. Okay, so there's an error. Whenever we add uh, the word at the beginning of result, we have to reset it. So we say word is equal to empty string. And then we add um, a space here. So we have word plus space, or we can say element, but for simplicity, let's do space and then result. Okay, and then let's do that for the last part. Okay. Um, we can check if it is the first encounter of our space if it's encountered the first time we don't add space okay
Okay. So if we encounter the first space, so is is first is true initially. So we have if is first is is true, we just assign result to word and then we say is first is equal to false. Okay. So let's try that. Okay, so we have world hello. Okay, so let me explain this part. So, if we encounter the space the first time, let's say hello space world, we don't add space at the end um, at the end of result. Okay, so we don't use this because af after we encounter hello space, um, hello space, okay, hello adds um space is added at the end of hello because we have word here and then space it should only be word so if is first is true we just say that result is equal to word not result is equal to word plus space plus result to be able to avoid that space so if it um since we encounter the space the first time for the second time, we shouldn't encounter that, so we set is first false. So otherwise, we just execute it normally. Okay. Let's try the other cases. Okay. I love coding. Okay. So it's coding love I. That's good. Next one is the quick brown fox. Okay, that's good. What if we have an empty string? Okay, is that a space? So it shouldn't be. So we just have to um, use another if here. Okay. Okay, so why do I add another check here for the final one? Okay, so if I enter an empty string, it displays a space here. Okay, so we have to remove that space. So we just add, so if is first is true, result is equal to word. Otherwise, result is equal to word plus space plus result. Okay, so we would add another check. So let's do the previous examples hello world and I love coding hello world good I love coding good the quick brown fox and programming is fun Okay, the quick brown fox. Programming is fun. So fox brown quick D. Fun is programming. Good. And open AI is awesome. Okay. What if we only have one word? Okay, so that's how we solve a reverse sentence. Next problem, prime number check. Write a function that checks if a given number is prime. 
for input 7, the output is true. For input 12, the output is false. For input 31, the output is true. For input 50, the output is false. And for input 97, the output is true. Okay, so let's solve prime number check. Write a function that checks if a given number is prime. Take note that in this problem, you are given a number as an input. You need to write a function that determines whether the given number is prime or not. A prime number is a number greater than 1 that has no positive divisors other than 1 and itself. The function should return true if the number is prime and false otherwise. The provided examples um, demonstrate different inputs and their corresponding outputs after checking whether the number is prime. So let's start with our template from our first uh, program. Okay, so let's discuss. So we prompt an input using prompt the prompt function, enter a number, it saves the input as the variable an input. And then we call my function using an input as parameter, and then we use that parameter as uh, the argument for console.log to log our input, uh, our output. Okay, so for my function, we have num. Okay, so take note that a number less than one, okay. 1, 0 is neither prime nor, co nor composite. So if it's not prime, the function should return false. Negative numbers aren't prime numbers, so it sh we should return false. So we say if num is less than or equal to 1, so those are 1, 0, and negative number, we should return false. Next, result holds the result if, it, if, if the number is prime or not. We set result to true first. We iterate from 2 up to num, num minus 1, okay, and then we increment it to 1 at a time, and then we check if CTR divides num. So, if it divides num, it means that its remainder or modulo, okay, num modulo CTR is 0. If it is and 0, it means that CTR divides num. So the number is not a prime, so we set result to false, and then we uh, call break. Outside the for loop, we return result. So let's try this. So 7, 12, and 31 returns true, false, and true respectively. So that's good. Fifty, ninety-seven, and 1 returns false, true, false. So that's correct. Okay. Let's optimize our code here, okay? So for 7, we check it's if it is prime, so for the numbers 2 and 3. For 12, we check it uh, for 2. And then for 31, we check it for uh, true, okay? 
so here okay a prime number a non prime number let's say 12 okay can be expressed as 1 times 12 2 times 6 uh, 2 times 6 okay and then 3 times 4 and then 4 4 times 3 6 times 2 and 12 times 1 this is just the reverse of this so um, for each iteration we can separate this one 1 2 and 3 belongs to one group and 4, 6, and 12 belongs to the other group. We say that the first group, okay, 1, 2, and 3, is less than or equal to the square root of num, which is 12. So the square root of 12 is approximately 3 point something because the square root of 9 is 3. So we can further, okay, optimize it by using math.square roots of num and then we say less than equal okay since let's say if we check for 100 it should iterate um, to 10 we should check for 10 or let's say it, if uh, we have 9 okay we should check up to 3 okay if num is equal to 9 okay so let's try that So 7, 12, 12, and 31 returns true, false, and true respectively. So that's good. 50, 97, and 1. So 50, 97, and 1 returns false, true, and false respectively. So that's good. Let's try 0 and a negative number. So 0 and negative 7 uh, both returns false and false respectively. So that's how we solve prime number check. Next problem, average calculation. Write a function that finds the average of numbers in an array. For input of an array containing numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, the output is 3. For input of an array containing numbers 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50, the output is 30. For input of an array containing numbers 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10, the output is 6. For input of an array containing numbers 15, 25, 35, 45, and 55 in that order, the output is 35. And finally, for input of an array containing numbers 0, 0, 0, 0, and 0 in that order, the output is 0. Next problem, average calculation. Write a function that finds the average of numbers in an array. Take note that in this problem, you are given an array of numbers as input. Your task is to write a function that calculates the average of the numbers in the array. The average is obtained by summing all the numbers in the array and dividing the sum by the total count of numbers. The function should return the average value as the output. The provided examples demonstrate different inputs and their corresponding outputs after calculating the average. Okay, so let's start with our template from the first problem.
Okay, so let's discuss. So we would enter an array, prompt it using the prompt function, and um, it would JavaScript would get it a string and save it to variable and input. We run eval function uh, to convert the um, string into uh, an, an array, and then we call console.log to log the output to the screen, and within that is the parameter my function with um, with an input as the parameter. For my function, result is the average. We set the result to zero. Let's um, set our errors or special cases uh, more simply. If we have an empty array, we just say it is an invalid input because you cannot um, divide a number by zero. And let's for, uh, for simplicity's sake return zero. Okay, so this is this one. Otherwise, if we have a non-empty array, we run this. For each and every element of an array, so we use the for of um, structure of the for loop element wherein it gets all of, uh, it iterates all of the elements in an array and then we add each and every element to result. And then for the average, Result now holds the sum of the, of, the, uh, of the elements in an array. We return result divided by the length or the number of, uh, number of elements in an array. So let's test that. Okay, so for elements 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, the average is 3. Let's go on to the next set of examples. For elements 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50, the average is 30. Good. For the next example, For the elements 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, the average is 6. Good. Let's proceed with the next example. For elements 15, 25, 35, 45, and 55, the average is 35. Let's proceed with the next example. For elements 0, 0, 0, 0, and 0, the average is 0. Let's proceed with the next example. Let's say we have an empty array. Okay. Uh, the function, since we are constrained that we are uh, to create a function, we just say invalid input. What if we have only one element? Okay, that's good. What if we have a decimal um number um, or a floating point number um, as as an answer so instead of for elements one two three four and five let's say we replace five by six it's three point two okay so that's good so that's how we solve average calculation next problem remove duplicates write a function that removes duplicates from an array for input of an array containing numbers one two 2, 3, 4, 4, and 5, the output is an array containing numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. For input of an array containing numbers 10, 20, 10, 30, 30, 40, and 50 in that order, the output is an array containing numbers 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50 in that order. For input of an array containing numbers 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10, the output is an array containing numbers 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10. 
for input of an array containing numbers 15, 25, 15, 35, 45, 55, and 25 in that order, the output is an array containing numbers 15, 25, 35, 45, and 55 in that order. And finally, for input of an array containing numbers 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, and 1, the output is an array containing the number 1. Okay, so let's proceed with the next problem. Let's solve remove duplicates. Write a function that removes duplicates from an array. In this problem, you are given an array as input. Your task is to write a function that removes any duplicate elements from the array. The function should return a new array that contains only the unique elements in the original array. The provided examples demonstrate different inputs and their corresponding outputs after removing duplicates. So let's start with our template from the first problem and work from there. Okay, so let's discuss our problem. So we are to enter an array with duplicates. So we use the prompt function to get the input and save it to a string with variable name and input. To convert the string to an array, we use the eval function. We use eval with an input as its parameter and then we save it to an input. And then we call my function using parameter and input and then the resulting non-duplicate um, array we will log that so we use that use our out output as parameter to console.log to display our result within the my function uh, function okay we have an array as parameter result is the uh, non duplicate array array with no duplicates okay so we set the result into an empty array Next, we iterate each and every element of an array using element as the current element using the for of um, for of uh, pattern in the for loop. So we check if the current element element okay has a duplicate in the result. Okay, we check that by using the includes function of the resulting uh, array. So we say result that includes element. If it returns true, okay, so it means that it has a duplicate. So we shouldn't add the element. Otherwise, it returns false. It doesn't have a duplicate. We have to add the element. So if includes result that includes of element is not true, it means that it doesn't have a duplicate. We add element to result. Adding an element to uh, an array, we use the push function. So we say result.push and we use element as parameter. Outside the for loop, we return the result. So let's set, test our function. Okay, so we have array with elements 1, 2, 2, 3, 4, 4, 5. It outputs 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's good. Let's proceed with the next example. Okay. 
okay so we have uh, 10 20 10 30 30 40 50 it results to 10 20 30 40 50 that's good so let's proceed with the next example We have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. The result is 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Let's proceed with the next example. So for the next example, we have 15, 25, 15, 35, 45, 55, and 25. The output is 15, 25, 35, 45, and 55. Good. Let's proceed with the next example. Okay, so we have the example 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, and 1. The output is 1. Okay, good. What if we have an empty array? Okay, we have an empty array as output. What if we have an array with only one element? The output is the element itself. Good. So that's how we solve remove duplicates. Next problem. Title case conversion. Write a function that converts a string to title case. For input string hello space world, all in small letters, the output is hello space world. For the first letter H is, um, is in capital and the first letter of the second word W is in capital. For input string JavaScript space programming, all in small letters, the output is JavaScript space programming, where in the first letters of each of the words JavaScript, which is J, and programming, which is P, are in capital letters. For input string OpenAI space language space model, the output is OpenAI space language space model, where in the first letters of the words O for OpenAI, L in language, and M for model are in capital letters and the rest are in small letters. For input string the space quick space brown space fox, all in small letters, the output is the space quick space brown space fox, where in the first letter of each of the words T for the, Q for quick, B for brown and F for fox respectively are in capital letters and the rest are in small letters. And finally for input string chat GPT space is space amazing. The output is chat GPT space is space amazing. Where in each of the letter, each of the first uh, letter of each of the word C for chat GPT, I for is and A for amazing are in capital letters. The rest are in small letters. Next problem, we solve title case conversion. Write a function that converts a string to title case. Take note that in this problem, you are given a string as input. Your task is to write a function that converts the string to title case. Title case means that the first letter of each word in the string should be capitalized while all other letters sh should be in lowercase. The provided examples demonstrate um, different inputs to their corresponding outputs after converting them to title case. So let's use our template from the first problem and uh, go from there.
Okay, so let's try this one. Okay, so we enter a string. We use the prompt function to get its value. So, and save it to the variable name and input. We call console.log. And then we call uh, my function and an input as parameter. And with that output, we use that as parameter for console.log to display the result. Next, we have my function, uh, a string as parameter. Result holds the result in title case. Word holds the current word. We don't need to use the uh, variable word, okay? So we just go character per, char per character. Is first is true if it is the first character, um, if it is the first letter in the word, uh, otherwise it's false. So uh, for simplicity, um, words here are separated by spaces and nothing more, okay? So we iterate each and every element of a string. So we use the for of function and use the element variable as the current element. So if we encounter a space, it means that the next character is true. So if element is space, we just set its first variable to true and nothing else. So we don't add any characters into result. Otherwise, it is part of a word. So if it is part of the word, and if its first is true, we add the capital um, equivalent of element using string that to uppercase to result using the push function. Okay, so we say result that push string that up to uppercase of element, and then we set uh, is first to false. Otherwise. Um, it is not the first letter of the current word, so we say result that push. So we add an element to the to result, but we use string that to lowercase, so the lowercase equivalent of element. Okay, so that's for the else part. Okay, and then outside the for loop, we return the result. So let's test that. Okay, I'm sorry, it's not string, but the variable itself. So it's not string that to upper case of element, but rather element that to upper and element that to lower. I'm sorry.
and it should be element dot to uppercase and element dot to lowercase. I'm sorry again. And since we are using strings, we just use result is equal to result plus element, okay? Okay, so hello world returns hello world in title case... Oh, okay. Um, spaces here are included, so let, let me fix the code. Okay, so hello world returns hello world. Next is JavaScript programming. Okay, we have JavaScript programming in title case. Next is OpenAI language model. Okay, we have OpenAI language model in title case. Next is the quick brown fox and chat GPT is amazing. Okay, we have the quick brown fox and chat GPT is amazing what if we have an empty string still we have an empty string what if we have one element okay one element that is capitalized okay so that's how we solve title case conversion next problem anagram check write a function that checks if two strings are anagrams take note that we have two inputs uh, both of them are strings in which we will check if they are anagrams or not for input strings listen and silent the output is true for input strings triangle and integral the output is true for input strings school and cool the output is false for input strings cat and act the output is true and finally, for input strings hello and world, the output is false. Next is we solve the problem anagram check. Write a function that checks if two strings are anagrams. In this problem, you are given two strings as input. Your task is to write a function that checks if the two strings are anagrams. Anagrams are strings that contain the same elements but may be in a different order if the two strings are anagrams the function should return true otherwise it should return false the provided examples demonstrate different inputs in their corresponding outputs to determine if they are anagrams so let's begin with our template from the first problem and proceed from there
Okay, so let's discuss. So the trick here is to have a data structure of type boolean. So this is check, okay? We're in, we have, if the second string has five elements, check has also five elements, boolean elements. So check has the not n for the number of elements, we're in n is the number of characters in the second string, string two, okay. So, um, we use prompt as the function, we prompt for, for a string, we prompt for another string using the prompt function, and then we save it to an input and an input two respectively. We call my function using an input and an input two as parameters, the output, we use that as parameter for console.log to log our output to the screen. Next, for the function, okay, my function, we use a string and a string two to denote the first and second strings as parameters. We say result to be the result if they are anagrams. So result is true if the two strings are anagrams, false otherwise. Initially, we set result to true and then we set check to an empty um, array okay we iterate each and every element of a string two so we uh, push or add the false values for check so that the number of false values equals to the number of letters in a string two for check okay so this is for the first a uh, loop okay for the second loop we iterate each and every element of us uh, of the first string so we use for of uh, format of the for array we use element as the current element okay so that's that okay we have to say uh, we have to take note that for each element is in a string has a match okay in the second string so we uh, if uh, the element in the first string matches the element of a second string we say is change is true because we have to change the state of the our check array from true to false okay so so initially since it is not yet changed we set is changed to false and then we iterate each and every element of the second string but now we just um use this format Okay, CTR is zero. CTR is less than length of a string two plus plus CTR. Because we have to check if element is equal to uh, a string two, the second string of index CTR, and check the check array of index CTR. Okay, the check array of index CTR should be false, so we say and not check of index CTR. Okay. So if it's um, if this is true, it means that uh, there is an element that is in the first string matches with the element in the second string. Okay, so we set check of index CTR to true and is changed to true. Okay, so there is a match. With no need to iterate to the next um, letters for the second string. So we say break. Okay. So we break for the uh, inner for loop. So that's for the second string. Now we are uh, within the first string. Okay. So for the uh, first string, okay. If no letter matches the element in the first string for the second string, so we say if is change is false, okay. Then string a string and a string two aren't anagrams we set result to false and then no need to check the other uh, letters for the first string so we say break okay next result can only be true okay result can only be true if each and every element of check of index ctr is true Okay, so we iterate, okay, a string 2, or we say check. Okay, using CTR as the current index. So if 
check of CTR is false, we say result is equal to false. No need to check the other Boolean fa uh, values of um, check. So we call a break and then we return the result. So let's check this. Okay, so listen and silent returns true. Let's check the other examples. Triangle and integral also returns true. Let's check with the next example. School and cool returns false. Let's check with the next example. Cut and act uh, is true. Okay, good. Let's check with the next example. Okay, hello world returns false. That's great. What if we have two non, uh, two empty strings? Okay, it's true since uh, they are anagrams of each other. What if we only have? Uh, what if the second string is empty? Okay, it's false. Good. What if the first string is empty? Okay, it's false. Okay, so that's how we solve anagram check. Next problem, second smallest number. Write a function that finds the second smallest number in an array for input array containing numbers 4, 2, 8, 1, and 6. The output is 2. For input of an array containing numbers 10, 5, 7, 3, and 2. In that order, the output is 3. For input of an array containing numbers 9, 9, 9 and 9. In that order, the output is the number 9. For input of an array containing numbers 2, 2, 2, and 2. In that order, the output is 2. And finally, for input of an array containing numbers 1, 3, 5, 7, and 9. In that order, the output is 3. Next problem, we solve the second smallest number. Write a function that finds the second smallest number in an array. In this problem, you are given an array of numbers as input. Your task is to write a function that finds the second smallest number in the array and return it. The second smallest number is the number that appears after the smallest number in the sorted order. If there are multiple occurrences of the second smallest number, you should return the number itself. Okay, there are multiple occurrences of the second smallest number. You should return the number itself. Okay. The provided examples um, demonstrate different inputs and their corresponding outputs to find the second smallest number in the array. So we use our template from the first problem and we'll take it from there.
Okay, so let's discuss our code. Okay, so we enter an array. So by using the prompt function, it converts our input to string. So we have, uh, and we save it to the variable name and input. So to convert a string into an array, we use the eval function, and then an input as parameter, and then we save it as an input. So an input now is an array, so we call my function using an input as parameter, and the output of my function, we use that as input in console.log to log our result to the screen. So next, we use my function and an array as parameter. So since we're second the sm seeking, looking for the second smallest number in an array, so if uh, the array contains less than two elements, for simplicity, let's just display invalid input and return to zero. Okay, so smallest r is the smallest number in an array, and then result is the second smallest number in an array. Okay. So since we are seeking for the smallest number, we initialize it to a huge number. It can be 1 million, but for formality, it's the property positive underscore infinity in all capital letters of the object number. So we set smallest to number that positive infinity and result to number that positive infinity. So we iterate each and every element in an array using the for of loop. Okay, and the element um, gets the current element of an array. Okay, so if the current element is less than the smallest, okay, so we need to make an adjustment. Okay, so we say, okay, we say that the smallest gets the element, right? Okay, this one, okay. Uh, inside the if before that if the small if smallest okay the smallest element is less than the result okay so we set result to the smallest so if the smallest now okay is less than the result the second smallest okay we say the second smallest the second smallest right now Okay, takes the smallest to be able to make the adjustment since we are modifying smallest we should take we should assign result to smallest and then we return the result okay so let's check for 2816 Okay, it returns true. How about ten five seven three two? It returns three. How about nine 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 nine?
Okay, finally we got it. we got it. Okay, so we iterate um, each and every element of an array. If element is less than or equal to the smallest, now now element should be the smallest in the array. Okay, but first we check if the smallest is less than the second to the smallest. So if it is less than, okay, we set a uh, the current value of the second smallest to the smallest so that the smallest will um, get the element okay so that's how um, our our code should work okay so let's test it with our examples 42816 Okay, that's two. Uh, how about ten five seven three two? The answer is three. How about nine 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 nine? The answer is nine. How about two 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 two? The answer is 2. How about 
Okay, I finally got it. Okay, so let's discuss. So here we have two cases. One is the current element is less than that of the two previous elements. So if we say element is less than result, okay, um, the result gets the element, so we assign result to element. But before that, we should uh, adjust the value of smallest, so we have smallest equal to result. Okay, that's the first one. The second case is that the element is less than the smallest. Okay, so if it is less than the smallest, okay, naturally we uh, set smallest to element, but before that, if smallest is less than result, okay, so we have to update result. So we set result to smallest. I hope that clears that out. So let, let's test it uh, again. So we have 42816. So the answer is 2. That's correct. How about 105732? The answer is 3. How about 9999? The answer is 9. How about 2222? Two, 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 two? The answer is 2. And finally, how about 13579? The answer is 3. How about let's test for an empty array? Good. Let's test with two elements, 1 and 2. Okay, the answer is 2. Let's test the ele two elements in the reverse, 2, 1. The answer is still 2. So that's how we solve second smallest number. Next problem, unique characters check. Write a function that checks if a string contains only unique characters. For input string hello, the answer is false. For input string world, the output is true. For input string programming, the output is false. For input string JavaScript, the output is false. And finally, for input string OpenAI, the output is true. Next, we solve the problem unique characters check. Write a function that checks if a string contains only unique characters. Take note that uh, in, in this problem, you are given a string as input. Your task is to write a function that determines whether the string contains only unique characters or not. A string contains only unique characters if each character appears only once in the string. If the string contains any duplicate characters, the function should return false. If all characters in the string are unique, the function should return true. The provided examples demonstrate different inputs and their corresponding outputs to check if a string contains only unique characters. So we um, start with the, our template from the first problem and then we'll, we'll move from there.
Okay, so let's check. Uh, we prompt enter a string and then we get our input and save it. Save the string to the variable and input. We call my function using an input as parameter and the output of the function as input for the function console.log to display our result. Within the function my function, we have a parameter a string and then result to the result of my f uh, the function. Okay. Um, it is initially set to true, so we assume that the string has unique elements. We have a check array wherein we store the previous elements of the array uh, as um, while we iterate them. So we iterate each and every element of an array using the for of uh, loop. S and element stores the current element. So we check if that element is uh, exists in the uh, array check using the function includes so we say if check includes element therefore um, the string contains duplicates we set result to false and then we exit the loop using break no need to check the other elements otherwise uh, the char current character doesn't contain any duplicates from its previous character so we add it to check so we say call the push element of check using element as the parameter so we say check that push element and then outside the for loop we return the result so let's check Okay, we enter the words hello and world and it results to false and true respectively, so that's good. Let's try with the other uh, strings. For the words programming and JavaScript, the result is false and false respectively, so let's try the last example. Okay, OpenAI results to true. Okay, let's check if, uh, for an empty string. Uh, an empty string has unique characters, so it's true. So that's how we solve unique characters check. Next problem, camel case conversion. Write a function that converts a given string to camel case. For input string hello space world, all in small letters, the output is hello in small letters, the capital W and small letters O, R, L, and D. No spaces. For input string the space quick space brown space fox all in small letters the output is the string the all in small letters capital q small letters u i c and k the capital letter b small letters r o w n the capital letter f and the small letters o and x no spaces for input string javascript space programming the output is a string, JavaScript, all in small letters, the capital P, and small letters R, O, G, R, A, M, M, I, N, and G, all without spaces. For input string open space AI space model, all in small letters, the output is a string which is open all in small letters the capital a small letter i the capital letter m and small letters o d e and l no spaces and finally for input string code space challenge all in small letters the output is code all in small letters the capital c and small letters h a l l e n g and e no spaces 
camel case conversion. Write a function that converts a given string to camel case. In this problem, you are given a string as input. Your task is to write a function that converts the string to camel case. Camel case is a name convention where each word in the string except the first word starts with an uppercase letter and the words are concatenated without any spaces. Okay, and then the provided examples demonstrate different inputs and their corresponding outputs of converting a string to camel case. Okay, so take note that for camel case, there's an absence of spaces. Okay, so let's start. So we have here our code for the first problem and then we'll start from there. Okay, so let's discuss. So we prompt enter a string to let the enter user as a string. So we use the prompt function and we store it as an input. And then we call my function with parameter an input. And the output of my function is a parameter of console.log. So we can log to the result to, uh, to the output. 
uh, to the screen rather. So uh, function my screen takes a parameter of a string. Result is the uh, resulting string in camel case. Is new word is true if um, the current element is is beginning of a new word false otherwise is begin is uh, when the current character is the first character of the string false otherwise so it helps us is begin helps us determine that the first character should always be uh, small letters okay and then we iterate um, we use the for of pattern for the for loop of a string wherein element holds the current character of the string. So, um, in this um, example, uh, a word is separated by spaces, so we just compare it to space. So, if element is a space, um, just add the space to the result. Okay, so we have result is equal to result plus element. And then, if ever is new word is false, we just set it to true because the next character is uh, the first letter of a new word. Okay, this one, this part of the code is the case wherein element is not a space, so it is a letter. Okay, so if the current uh, element of the string is the beginning or the left most part of the string we say we add um, the lower uh, the lowercase letter so we say result is equal to result plus two lowercase of element otherwise we check if it is a new word so we say um, else if is new word is true okay if is new word is true therefore the first element is capital letter okay the exception is whenever it is the first element of the string we already covered that in this so we just say result is equal to result plus the capital letter of the element so we call the two uppercase function of element and then we set is new word to false okay next this is the part where in uh, the current element of the string is not the first letter of the string or the first letter of the word so we just say result is equal to result plus the um, small small letter of the element so that's element to lowercase okay so uh, whenever um, we, we finished iterating okay we consume the first uh, char character if it is uh, the first um, iteration of the for loop so we say is begin equals false so the succeeding iteration is begin is always false and then we return the result so let's try that Okay, so let's discuss our adjustment. I said earlier that we add the space to result, 
um, I forgot the requirements of the Carmel case, there shouldn't be any spaces. So I deleted um, result is equal to result plus element here. So we just, we just set is new word to true. And then after uh, we execute, uh, if is begin is true, so we consume the first letter of the string, we set is new word equals to false. So that uh, the succeeding letter is a small letter. So if we, um, if we didn't add this, we accidentally set the second letter to a capital one. So we have to set is new word is equal to false. Okay, so let's test our code. So we have hello world here, all in small caps. So this is hello world in uh, camel case. Next one is the quick brown fox and Java programming. Or the JavaScript programming. So this is the camel case for the quick brown fox. The next is JavaScript programming. This is the camel case for JavaScript programming. The next is OpenAI model. So it's open space AI space model. So this is the uh, camel case for OpenAI model. Take note, the second word is capital A and then small i. Okay. And finally, we have code challenge. Code challenge. This is the camel case for code challenge. What if we have an empty string here? Okay, the output is an empty string. What if we have two um, small words? Okay, this is the camel case. This is valid. What if we have two capital uh, letters separated by spaces? That is also um, the output. What if we have one capital, one small? okay same and then one small one capital and it's still the same so that's how we solve camel case conversion next problem leap year check write a function that checks if a given year is a leap year for input 2000 the output is true for input 2021 20, the output is false for input 1900 the output is false for input 2024 20, the output is true and for input 1988 the output is true next problem we'll be solving leap year check write a function that checks if a given year is a leap year in this problem you are given a year as input your task is to write a function that determines whether the given year is a leap year or not. Uh, leap year is a year that is divisible by 4, except for years that are divisible by 100 but not divisible by 400. The provided examples demonstrate different it inputs and their corresponding outputs of, of checking whether a year is a leap year or not. Uh, okay, uh, take note that um, a year that is not divisible by 4 is not a leap year. So if you take a look at example 2, 2021 is false. A year that is divisible by 4 is a leap year. So if you take a look at examples uh, 4 and 5, years 2024 20, and 1988 are leap year. An exception is that if a year is divisible by 100, it is not a leap year. So in example 3, 1900 is not a, a leap year. An exception for that is if a year is divisible by 400, it is a leap year. So for the first year, year 2000, it is a leap year. So let's use our code for problem one and let's start from there.
So let's discuss our code. So we prompt the user to enter a year using uh, the prompt function and then let's store his input for in the variable an input. Let's use an input variable as parameter for our function, my function, and the output of which would be a parameter for the function console.log so that we can log our output on the screen. For function my function, it takes on um, the parameter num, uh, excuse me for a while. Uh, the result uh, returns true if num is a uh, leap year false otherwise. So initially, let's set result to false. So if num mod 4 is 0, it means that um, the num okay, divided by 4, uh, num is uh, divisible by 4. Okay, such as 1988 and 2024. If num mod 100 is equal to 0, it means that num is divisible by 100. And if num mod 400 is 0, it means that num is divisible by 400. So if a year is divisible by 0, it is a leap year. So let's set result to true. An exception of which is it is divisible by, by 100 is not a leap year. So we set result by false. So let's say a number is divisible by 100. This and this should be executed. Don't do this. Don't do if and else if. This should be separate. Okay. This should run. And this one. Okay. So uh, yeah. And then an, an exception of which is that if the year is divisible by 400, it is a leap year. So let's set it to true. So if year is divisible by 400, this, this, and this statement would run. And then after that, we return the result. So let's test our program. So we have here 2020, uh, 2000 and 2021. So that's 2000. Let's verify again. Good. 2021. False. Good. 1900 and 2024. 1900 is not a leap year since it is divisible by 100. False. Good. 2024 is a leap year. True. Okay. 1988. 1988 is a leap year. So true. And what if we have year zero? And if we have year negative 2000, it is a leap year. Okay, so true. Okay. So that's how we solve leap year check. Next problem, vowel remover. Write a function that removes all vowels from a string. For string input hello, the output is HLL. -L. For input string I space love space programming, the output is LV space PRG R M M N G. For input string open AI, the output is P N. For input string A E I O U, the output is an empty string. For input string V space quick space brown space fox, the output is T H space Q C K space B R W N space F X. Take note that for inputs one and two, uh, the first letter in the first word is capitalized. The rest are small letters. For input three, O is capitalized. So is the last two characters A I. And for the fifth input, the first letter in the first word, T, is capitalized. Next problem, let's solve vowel remover. Write a function that removes all vowels from a string. Okay. In this problem, we are given a string as input. Our task is to write a function that removes all vowels from the string and returns the modified string. Uh, for this purpose, I'll just create another string. Vowels that include letters A, E, I, O, and U 
both lowercase and uppercase. The provided examples uh, demonstrate different inputs and their corresponding outputs after removing the vowels. So in here, spaces are returned. And then let's use our template for our, for, from our first problem and let's go from there. Okay, let's discuss. So we use the prompt function to prompt a user to enter a string and then let's save it to variable and input. Let's use an input as parameter of function my function and let's call that. And then the output is uh, used as parameter for console.log so we can display our output to the screen. Now for my function, for our function my function, we have a parameter here, a string. Okay, and then result holds the result, a string without the vowels, and lookup is just a lookup wherein uh, all of the possible vowels are, uh, are there. So we have capital A-E-I-O-U and small A-E-I-O-U. So we iterate each and every element uh, ca character of a string using L for of, okay, using the for of format, and element holds the current character. So we say that we check if the element exists in lookup, therefore there is a vowel. Okay, so we shouldn't include that element. So we check if a character is in a string by using the includes function. So we say lookup that includes element is true if element is a vowel since that element exists in is in A E I O U. So we just have to do the uh, reverse of that. So we say not. So not look up that includes element. So we say that element is a non-vowel since it is false. So we say result is equal to result plus element or its shorthand form result plus equals element. So that's for the if statement. Outside the for loop, we just return the result and let's check our code. So first is hello. HLL, good. Next is I love programming and open AI. So I love pro programming is in capital I separated by spaces. I love programming is what? Space L V P R G R M M N G, good. Next one is open AI, capital O and A and I. We have sp uh, PN, okay. Next one is small a e i o u. Good. Empty string. And then finally, we have the quick brown fox. <sighs> Only the phrase the quick brown fox with a capital T. The rest are in small letters. So we have. TH space QCK space BRWN space FX. What if we have capital letters A E I O U empty string? What if we have an empty string? It's still an empty string. So that's how we solve uh, vowel remover. Next problem maximum product. 
Write a function that finds the maximum product of two numbers in an array. For input of an array with numbers 2, 4, 6, and 8 in that order, the output is 48. For input of an array containing numbers negative 3, 1, or negative 1, 0, 2, and 4 in that order, the output is 8. For input of an array containing numbers 1, 5, 2, 3, and 6 in that order, the output is 30. For input of an array containing the numbers negative 2, negative 5, negative 3, and negative 1, the output is 15. And finally, for input of an array containing numbers 1, 1, 1, and 1, the output is 1. Next problem, we'll be solving maximum product. Write a function that finds the maximum product of two numbers in an array. So in this problem, we are given an array of numbers as input. Uh, our task is to write a function that finds the maximum product of two numbers from the array and returns the result. Uh, the provided examples demonstrate different inputs and their corresponding outputs after finding the maximum product. So let's start with our code from our first program and go from there. Okay, so let's discuss. We prompt a user to enter an array. So we use the prompt function and then we save it to variable and input. We use eval to save um, the, since the user's input is a string. We, trans, uh, we uh, convert uh, the string into an array using the eval function. And then we call my function using parameter and input 
and the output of my function is used as the parameter of console.log to log our output to the screen. So within the function my function, it takes a parameter an array, okay? Result um, holds the resulting maximum product, okay? Product of two numbers. So we have a two for loops here, a loop inside a loop. We use CTR and CTR2 as, um, as the indices of the array. So CTR uh, runs from the second element up to the last element. So since in JavaScript, indices uh, starts with 0. So 0 is the first element. 1 is the second element. So we start with 1. And then it should end with length minus 1. So we say CTR is less than length. Increment CTR by 1. CTR2 is placed inside of um, the um, CTR for loop. So we iterate from 0 up to the index to the left of CTR. So that's CTR minus 1. So we say CTR2 is 0. Okay, CTR2 should be less than CTR and then we increment CTR2. Okay, so let's say if length is 4, so CTR is what? one two three and then ctr2 is a zero ctr2 in this case if ctr uh, one uh, if ctr is two is a zero and one and then if ctr is three ctr2 is zero one and two so that's how you uh, we how the two for loops iterate okay so uh, we say that the product is the product of an array of index CTR and an array of index CTR2. We store it with variable product. So if product is greater than result, it means that um, that's our maximum product so far. So we update result with the product. So uh, take note, the result can be a um, small number, very small number. Let's say negative 1 million, but for formality, it should be uh, we use the value num not negative infinity property of number. So we say result it has an initial value of number that negative infinity. So if result hasn't been updated, um, to keep things simple, uh, let's just say it's an invalid input and set the result to zero. Okay. Otherwise, we have a maximum product. Okay, so let's return result. So let's try that in our uh, program and then let's run. So first one is 2468. 24668. Six, so all of them are positive. It's 48. Okay. Next is negative 3, negative 1, 0, 2, 4. Okay, the answer is 8. Good. Next one is 15236, all positive. So that's 15236. So the product is 30. Next one would be negative 2, negative 5, negative 3, and negative 1, all negative. 2531, all negative. 25. Three, one, all negative. So we are looking for the maximum product. So it's positive 15. And then finally, we have uh, 1, 1, 1, 1. The result is 1. What if we have an empty array? It should be 0. Invalid input. Good. What if we have a 1 element array? Invalid input. 0. Good. What if we only have 2 elements? 3 and 5. Answer is 15. What if we have negative 5 and negative 3? The answer is still 15. All right. So that's how we solve maximum product. Next problem, valid email address. Write a function that checks if a string is a valid email address. For input string john at example.com, the output is true. For input string user at domain, the output is true false for input string abc at 123.xyz the output is true 
for input string test dot email at domain the output is false and finally for input string user at domain dot com the output is true okay so next we solve for the problem valid email address write a function that checks if a string is a valid email address in this problem you are given a string as input and your task is to write a function that checks if the string is a valid email address the provided examples demonstrate different inputs and their corresponding outputs indicating whether the input string is a valid email address true or not false uh, okay so for simplicity um a valid email address has only one at symbol and then uh, it can be composed of um, one or more uh, dot uh, there is one dot that is immediately after um, that is after um, the at symbol separated by one or more characters we define a valid character as uh, letters okay for simplicity let's um let's take small letters or we can take uh capital letters um no problem but um email addresses are case insensitive by the way and then we can take uh, numbers as well so letters and numbers okay so uh, let's use our template from the first problem and go from there
Okay, so let's discuss. So here we prompt the user to enter a string using the prompt function, and let's say the user's input to variable my in a uh, to variable an input. Let's use that variable an input as parameter to function my function and call my function. And the output of my function will be used as parameter of console.log to log our output to the screen. So within my function, um, we have a parameter here, a string. Car count is the number of uh, counts of a character. Okay, We'll be counting the number of at sign. Okay, and then we'll for the first part and for the second part we'll be counting the number of dots. Okay, so here we initialize uh, car count to zero. Okay, at post is the position of the at sign. Dot post is the position of the dot sign of the dot character rather. Okay. So we initialize it both to negative one since JavaScript is a zero based uh, programming language, it begins with zero. So uh, we use negative one. Okay. Next lookup uh, is a string with all of the valid um, characters here. So we have all of the alphabet, small and big, all of the numbers, zero to nine. 0 to 9 okay and the at sign and the dot so here we have our first for loop okay we iterate each and every element of a string so if a character is a valid character we just do nothing if it is not within the character so we use not and then we use the function include so if look up that includes element is false so we immediately return false okay so that's check uh that's a check for invalid characters such as spaces and other punctuation marks we didn't include any punctuation marks in our um in our email address okay next we count the number of at signs so if element is equal to at uh, we increase character count so uh, our convention is for simplicity we only have one at sign so if car count is not equal to one we re we return false okay we reset car count to zero so that we can count uh, dot okay so we say at pos okay is a string that index of so we are guaranteed that uh, we have one at sign so we can call index of index of returns the index of the of a substring and in this case it is an at sign of a string okay so we iterate from the at sign actually it can be the at sign plus one okay the next character so we let ctr be at post plus one but up to the last um, character of a string so that's length minus one so ctr should be less than length of string and we increment ctr by one so if a string of index ctr is dot so we can increase car count so if car count okay that's for the for loop so if car count is less than one so we don't have a dot sign dot character after at so it is an invalid email address so we return false okay so next we um get the position of uh the at sign so for uh, simplicity we use uh, let's say tr is equal to at post plus one <coughs> ctr is less than a string that length increment ctr by one if a string of index ctr is dot we say dot pos equals ctr and then we break okay so um that position it should be at position so there should be a character before at so we say that at post should be greater than zero so that should be true and then uh, there should be characters between at and dot so at minus dot should be greater than one if they don't have any um characters between them they are equal to one so it should be greater than one 
and then finally we should have um, characters after the dot so this should be dot pause I inverted this and this so it should be at pause greater than zero at pause minus dot pause I'm sorry I inverted it it should be dot pause minus at pause so at pause should be greater than zero there shouldn't be any characters to the left of at sign dot pause should be less than a string that length minus one there should be characters after the dot and then dot pause minus at pause is greater than one there should be characters between at pause and dot pause okay so this should be all equal to true so i would include the end okay the ends um, symbol for for the con for the conditional uh, for the conditions in JavaScript, which is a double ampersand. So let's check. There shouldn't be any lets. You just say car count is zero, no need to declare, okay. No errors, okay. Okay, under a string, john and example.com. True, okay, user at domain. False, okay, abc at one two three dot x y z so a b c at one two three x y z true okay test dot email at domain so it's false because there is no dot after domain this is what test dot email false so this should be uh, test that email at domain.com so this is test that email at domain.com so that would be true okay good and finally we have user at domain.com user at domain .com. okay that is true so what if we have an empty string it should be false what if we only have a domain no uh, that's a do at domain false uh, false so we have at domain.com false domain.com false okay user this is false okay user at okay still false uh, any other um, let's try a simple one so we have a at a.com that's true okay what if we have a hash at a.com it's invalid because uh, hash sign uh, we declare hash sign as invalid okay so that's how we solve valid email address next problem common elements write a function that finds the common elements between two arrays Take note that for input, you have two arrays in which you would find common elements, two. For input of uh, uh, two arrays, for the first array, we have elements one, two, three, and four in that order. For the second array, we have the elements three, four, five, and six in that order. The output is an array containing elements 3 and 4 in that order. For input, we have two arrays. The first array containing elements 1, 2, and 3 in that order. The second array containing elements 4, 5, and 6 in that order. The output is an empty array. For input arrays, we have two arrays. For the first array, we have elements string apple, string banana and string orange in that order for the second array we have strings banana grape and apple in that order the output is an array of strings containing the elements apple and banana in that order for input 
we have two arrays. For the first array, we have the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 in that order. For the second array, we have the numbers 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10 in that order. The output is an empty array. For input, we have two arrays. The first array are the numbers 1, 2, and 3 in that order. The second array contains numbers 3, 4, and 5 in that order. We have the output is an array containing the number 3. Okay, so let's solve the problem common elements. Write a function that finds the common elements between two arrays. Uh, take note that in this problem, you are given two arrays as input, and your task is to write a function that finds the common elements between the two arrays. The provided examples demonstrate different inputs and their corresponding output showing the common elements found in the arrays. So let's start from uh, with the, our code from problem 1, and we'll go from there. Okay, so let's discuss. So we use the prompt function to get the input from the user. So enter an array. We save it as input. 
uh, enter another array uh, we see use we save it as an input to we use eval to convert the string so we use our I input our strings to uh, array so we use eval an input and save it to an input to convert an input from string to array same with in an input to we use an input and an input to as parameters in my function. We call my function and the output is used as parameter for console.log to display the output of our function. So for my function, for our function, my function, it has two parameters, an array and an array two. Result is the resulting array, okay, the one with the common elements between two arrays. We initialize result to an empty array check is um, a parallel array of the second array an array 2 okay which is a boolean type of array wherein if it is a match for uh, a, if there's an l matching element of an array 2 in an array we we you uh, we tag it to true otherwise it's false so let's initialize um, check to have false uh, to be false okay if an array 2 has n elements check has n instances of the value false okay so the for loop takes care of this next we have another for loop within a for loop so we iterate each element of the first array an array using element as um, as the um, using element as the current element of the iteration of an array okay and then is match no need to compare is match okay no need to check is match so we just remove that and then for the second uh, loop inside the first element loop we iterate each element in an array too but this time not an element but with an index ctr since we're dealing with two parallel arrays an array 2 and ctr so we use uh, the index method let not for of okay so we say let ctr equals zero so the first array up to the last element which is length minus one so we say ctr is less than an array to that length plus plus ctr there is a match if the element of an array equals an array two of index ctr and a check of index ctr should be false so this should be not check of index ctr so if that uh, whole condition is true we say that uh, element okay exists in both an array and an array too so we s call push uh, the function push of results to push that element into array result and then we tag uh, check of ctr to be true okay since we are finished with the element Okay, with this element, we say um, we say break. Okay, this is where I forgot the. Okay, is match. Okay, so um, if this inside the loop is executed, it means that we have a match. Okay, so no need to process the. Um, this succeeding um the succeeding uh, iterations for the inner array okay so if we break this okay we would uh, go outside of the the array the the inner for loop rather ctr so ah okay it is as is and then we go to the next iteration of element okay so this is deleted okay so we check our code okay 
So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, and 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4. 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, it's 3, 4. Next, 1, 2, 3, and 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 1, 2 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, it's an empty array. Good. Next, we have apple, banana, orange, and banana grape apple. Apple, banana, orange. Okay, apple, banana, orange. Um, apple not defined. Let's try that again. Banana, orange. Oh, wait. This should be strings. I'm sorry. So, the apple, banana, orange. Okay. Apple. Banana. Orange. Okay. Because it should be a string. Okay. Next one would be banana, grape, and apple. So, banana. Banana. Grape and apple. Okay, so the answer is apple and banana. Okay, or banana and apple. It's also a valid answer. Okay, next we have one, two, three, four, five, and six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four. Okay, empty list. Okay, one, two, three, and three, four, five. Okay, we have uh, one element array three. What if we have uh, both empty arrays? Okay, empty. What if we have uh, the first array is non empty, the second is empty? Okay, it's still empty. What if the first array is empty and the second array is not empty, it's still empty, okay. Uh, all our um, outputs are correct. So that's how we solve common elements. Next problem, perfect square check. Write a function that checks if a given number is a perfect square. For input 16, we have the output true. For input 25, we have the output true. For input 10, we have the output false. For input 0, we have the output true. And finally, for input 27, we have the output false. Okay, so next we have perfect square check. Write a function that checks if a given number is a perfect square. Take note that in this problem, we are given a number as input. Your task is to write a function that checks if the given number is a perfect square. The provided examples demonstrate different inputs and their corresponding outputs indicating whether the number is a perfect square or not. So here we have uh, our um, our um, the, uh, code for the first problem. So we use that as starting point and go from there.
Okay, so let's discuss. So we prompt an input from the user to enter a number and save it as an input. We use that an input as a parameter for my function. We call my function and the output. We use that as parameter for console.log to log our the output of our function call. So for function my function, we have here a parameter num. So it is invalid if um, we go for the um, for an for negative numbers automatically it is not a perfect square oh okay we can say false return false okay otherwise we use x as a check so uh, in javascript there is a square root function so we say let x be the square root of num okay so mat that square root and then we take on the uh, math that floor with, with which takes the integer value of x for positive numbers or non-negative numbers. So that's zero and uh, non-negative uh, zero and positive numbers. So we use the condition x equals equals to math that floor that x. So to check, so this returns true if it the square root of it is a uh, um has no decimal part otherwise it would return false so let's check So 16, 25, 10 returns true, true, and false, respectively. Next. Zero, 27, and a negative number returns true, false, and false, respectively. So that's, um, that's correct. So, um... Let's um, experiment uh, this code uh, some more and let's find other ways in order to uh, code this problem. We can use uh, the power uh, function of math. So we're in this is the base and this and then this is the exponent. Square root is just one half or 0.5. So we can say math.pow of arguments num and, and 0.5. We can try one half. Okay. Let's try to run this. Okay, one half works, so let's try 16, 25, and 10. It returns true, true, and false, 0, 27, and a negative number. Okay, it returns true, false, false. Let's try another way to solve this problem.
Okay, so let's discuss our um, third method of solving the problem. So we have here let x is equal to negative 1. So the goal of our uh, code here is to loop x and increment it from 0 up to a number that can be greater than or equal to num wherein x times x could be greater than or equal to num okay so we set here um, x to be negative 1 since the lowest possible uh, square root we can find is 0 and then for we use the do while loop wherein the statement first gets executed and um, before before using the condition inside the while that's why we start from negative 1 and not 0 because if we start from 0 it would be incremented and 1 is the lowest number 1 isn't the lowest number it is 0 so we have to decrease the value the initial value of x by 1 so we increment it and loop it while the x multiplied by itself is less than num so this one will exit the loop if x times x is greater than x times x is greater than or equal to num okay so we use return x times x equals equals to num if it is a perfect square that would return true otherwise x times x is greater than num that would return false so let's check uh, that would be 16, 25, 10. True, true, false, and 0 and 27, and a negative number. So that would be true, false, false. So that's how we solve perfect square check. Next, we have the problem longest word. Write a function that finds the longest word or words in a sentence. For input string, the space, quick space, brown space, fox space, jump space, over space, the space, lazy space, dog, and then period, the output is an array of strings containing the words quick, brown, and jumps. For input string i space love space coding space in space javascript and period, the output is an array containing the word javascript. For input string containing the words hello space world exclamation mark, the output is an array containing the words hello and world uh, in that order. For input string this space is space a space test and then period, the output is an array containing the words this and test in that order. And finally, for the string containing the words the space cat space is space on space the space map and then period, the output is an array containing the words the with a capital T, cat, the with a small t, and map in that order. Next, we solve the problem longest word, or in this case, uh, longest word or words according to the output since uh, some of them have more than one word. Okay, So write a function that finds the longest word or words in a sentence. Take note that in this problem, you are given a sentence as input and your task is to write a function that finds the longest word in the sentence. The provided examples demonstrate different inputs and their corresponding outputs, highlighting the longest word in each sentence. So our input is a sentence. So um, pro we're provided with um, a sample code for the first problem. Let's use that and go from there.
Okay, so let's discuss. We use the prompt uh, input to uh, prompt function to prompt the user to enter a sentence. We save the user's input to the variable and input. We use an input as parameter to function my function and call that. The output of my function is used as a parameter for console.log to display our output in the screen. So for function my function, we have a parameter here, a sentence. Result holds the array wherein the longest word or words reside. Okay, and then word is a temporary space for uh, for the word excuse me for a moment okay and then look up is um, our um, our possible values for all of the letters in the word so these uh, let's just keep things simple these are just capital and small letters all of the um, other characters that are not in lookup either separate the word such as spaces or terminate it such as dots and exclamation mark okay so that's for the lookup max is the maximum number of letters in the word we initialize max to zero okay For a moment, word that length is okay. Okay, so that is for max. So we have a for loop here, for of loop, wherein we iterate each and every character of a sentence using element holding the current um, set of characters in a sentence. So we check if the element is part of a word. So we use the includes function of lookup of element. So this returns true if it is a letter. So if it is a letter, we just append word. Otherwise, um, we the, the word is finished. So we check its length. Okay, so this um, this appends the character to the word. This checks if it is uh, if it is the current longest word. Okay, so here for else we have two ifs here. So if word that length is greater than max, so we have a longer word. So we reset our result. Okay, if it is greater than max okay good this is executed since it is an if and not an else if and we have to ensure that word that length is greater than zero otherwise if we have a word consisting of an empty string it would be um, included in the array so we don't want to do that so there's an additional checking and word that length is equal to zero then we add the word to result okay if the length of the word is equal to max okay we just append okay so we have another condition here if word that length is greater than or equal so if it is equal to max no problem just just add it so push adds uh, uh, and actually appends the word so if it is a uh, if the initial array is result it adds a word if uh, and the array is not empty it appends so it adds to the end okay and then we reset the word to an empty string so this is just for safety wherein um, the end of the sentence is not a um, dot or exclamation mark or if the end of a sentence is a letter so um, I just copied this so if word that length is greater than max, okay, um, we reset it and then we push the word. So if the 
um, last word is the longest word. So that would be uh, this would be this would execute and for safety. We just add word that length is greater than zero. Okay. So let's check. Okay, we have the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog, period. So it jumps with an S. So it's dog. We just update if word length is greater than max, we set max to word that length. Okay, so we have quick brown and jumps. Good. What if um, we have, uh, we end it in uh, not a period but a word? Okay, so if it is a longer word, it resets the array and it adds the new word. So the output is incredible, so that's good. Next, we have I love coding in JavaScript. So it returns the word JavaScript, so that's good. Next example, hello world, exclamation mark. So the output is hello and world. Okay, next uh, sentence is this is a test uh, period. Okay, so the answer is this and test. And finally, the cat is on the mat, period. Okay, so the answer is the cat with a capital T for the and the mat with a small t for the. Okay, what? If we have an empty string, the answer is empty string. What if we just have a period? Okay. What if we just have a letter? Okay. It returns A. What if we have A period? Okay. It returns the letter A. So I guess uh, that's, that's all for our tests. So that's how we solve longest 